here I am in the garage again. What I've decided to do is to pull the two hot cylinders out, this one and this one, and see what's going on, because there's some nasty clonking noises coming from that. So I'm hoping to sort that out. What I've done is I've removed the um, all this assembly out of the way, which goes on top like that. So I've unbolted all and put that down there out of the way. <laughs> I've also um, took all the bolts out of here. So now I'm going to pull the pull the rings out and uh, and see what we got. So I've just removed the PTFE seals. Um, everything's looking okay here actually. So I've got those out of the way, ready to pull out pull out the hot pistons. I've got them down on the bench and I'm glad to say they are in fairly good condition actually, considering. See they're a lip seal. Um, I haven't actually formed these as such other than pushed them down over the pistons and bolted them up. Um, the heat of the engine has done the rest, but the, um, they're still tight and holding a seal for the moment. So I'm hoping that this might be some sort of a solution to actually seal this kind of engine because um, the heat is always a bit of a problem with the lever seals I was using before. So, um, time will tell. So here we go, I've just taken the engine outside. I've pulled both pistons out, as you can see on the floor. Yep. Yo, right, Dave. I'll give you an idea of uh, how these are made up. So I've got bearing, bearings in the bottom of there like that. And on the bottom, they're that kind of shape. So this, this, they've actually got a skirt on the bottom. And I think what's been happening, I think the skirt has been impacting on the bottom of the hot bulb. The problem is it gets hot and the, um, the stainless steel in the bottom moves around the place. And I think it starts actually colliding with the, um, with the piston skirt. Um, I'm half tempted to actually cut the piston skirt off. So um, I think I'm going to do that. Let's have a look at the other one as well. Yep, so you can see the stainless steel hot bulb in the bottom there. There you go. So I'm going to um, I'm going to go ahead now and um, and cut these off. I think. So there you go. I've actually cut the skirts off now, so they've been lopped off, so they're shorter, so hopefully they won't catch in the bottom of the engine when I test run it. I've also put, welded these tabs on here. These tabs are to space it off, so when it goes up and down, something keeps it in the middle. It's quite a basic design really, because, um, because obviously this just rubs against metal, um, but because they, they hang vertically, there isn't a great deal of force actually um, against them so they they are just a necessary evil really the problem is because the bottom engine is so blooming hot if you put anything a bit more suitable there um, it would melt I did try using brass held on with uh, aluminium rivets um, but but that fell off because because of the heat I've just put it all back together and I've just been spinning it and what I have noticed is that the top of the piston is actually hitting the cross beam. I don't know how I didn't notice this, but it is hitting. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut 30 millimeters off the top of this piston. So I've just chopped the top of the piston off to give us a bit more clearance. So we got that one out of the way. There we go. So now, when we turn it round into the top position, we have some nice clearance. So hopefully that might stop some of our banging. So the next thing is to give it a go, fire them up again and see what we got. Here we are outside again, all ready to run. So it's the same setup again. I've got the alternator connected straight to the battery. There is no um, watt meter or amp meter at the moment because the one I had proved to be uh, unreliable. So I'm, I've ordered a new one on eBay. So I'm just waiting for that to turn up. But for the moment, I'm just, I'm just going to connect it to connect um, directly just to put a load on the alternator. 
So I'll get her fire, fired up a minute and ready to go. Right, so it's just started to run. Um, the squeaking seems to be coming from one of the seals. Uh, I think it might be air passing, but hopefully that will disappear in a minute. Well, so far it's quiet and there's no metallic tinking. Let's have a look at the fire, see what the fire is up to. Yeah, see the fire hasn't really got going yet actually. I might put a few more, more logs in if I can fit one in. I'll just shut that. Well, it seems to be running quite well, really. Everything's pretty quiet, really. It's not running quite as fast as I'd like it to, but it's not too bad at the moment. I'm just trying to get my camera to stop now. I've got quite an old mobile phone. I'm pressing the stop button and the pause button, but it won't stop. <laughs> I think I might have to upgrade if I'm going to do some more YouTube videos. Well, it's just started to gain speed. It's like it's just sort of overcome itself uh, and it's building speed. Oh, no, Dave. We're really starting to gain pace now. I'm not sure whether that it's because it's warming up or it's because the battery has become charged and the alternator is starting to take itself off loads. Um, it might be warming up because it normally takes half an hour to get to a, a good temperature. Let's have a look at the fire, see what's doing. Yeah, see the fire's only only just starting to get going, really, in all fairness. Lovely, it's really starting to get going now. Well, hopefully the modifications to the hot pistons has solved the conking problem because we're not getting much noise now. I'll get the tachometer in a minute and find out how fast it's going once it's uh, up to full speed. Something I haven't mentioned before is uh, this valve down here. This valve actually stops the engine so if I undo the valve, it passes air between the coal cylinders, one being here and one being here, and it will slow the engine down. And I'll close that again because it's about to stop. And what we've got here inside is a one-way valve. Well, it's all warmed up now. 
fire is going. I've just put some more wood on a second ago, but he's pretty much up the temperature. Um, he's not making a bad, bad noise actually. He's not revving quite as high as I'd like it to. So just under 200 RPM. I think, I think a part of the problem is that this pulley here needs to be bigger to uh, unload the engine a bit so it'll run a bit faster. Um, it's just uh, in previous tests the engine has proven to give out more power running at about uh, 600 RPM. Um, so, so that might be a future mod. I've just measured some temperatures of the, uh, the hot side and the cold side, if anybody is interested. Uh, the hot bulb in there is 550 Celsius. Um, I measured this with the laser uh, thermometer. And the cold side is running at roughly 30 degrees. The, um, because it runs on convection, what actually happens is the hot water rises in the tank, goes up through this tube here to the top of the radiator, gets cooled in the radiator, and then the water that comes out is slightly cooler, and then that just keeps circulating around. So it's natural convection for the cooling side of things. So it's been running for about an hour now. Um, so far, the seals seem to be holding up, holding up okay, really. I, I haven't lubricated them at all. Uh, that's the PTFE seals on the hot side, and, um, and, and everything seems to be okay. So um, I think that might be a bit of a success, really. Um, only time will tell, though, um, whether they will actually hold up or not. Uh, as far as the clonking's going from the hot side, it's not too bad compared to what it was. Uh, there is a bit of uh, metal or metal contact by the sounds of it. Um, but unfortunately, I think by the design of the uh, pistons, where they literally do rub up and down inside a metal tube um, to keep them straight, um, that's probably, probably as good as it's going to get, really, I think. The alternator is actually quite warm to the touch, so um, I'd imagine it is actually doing, doing a fair bit of work, actually. Uh, until we get our our, um, our voltage analyzer or charging analyzer, we, we won't know exactly, but um, it looks promising. So I suppose the next steps is to get a an amp meter, an inline amp meter and voltmeter, so I can really see what's going on as far as charging is going. Um, the particular meter that I've bought is an inline um, uh, battery charging analyzer. So that'll give us uh, watts and uh, and all that all that good stuff to give us information. Um, what I'm going to do with the alternator is I'm going to uh, <coughs> I'm going to make a ring to go on the pulley to actually make the alternator bigger. Uh, I think it's about uh, 100 millimeters across at the moment, so I'm going to increase that to 140 millimeters uh, and then go from there. Uh, if needed, we can always machine that back down again to. Um, better suit our needs. Right, I'm going to call it a day and uh, stop putting wood in the fire, let it cool down. So it's uh, just gone three o'clock, so we'll, we'll see how long uh, the wood lasts for until the engine stops. Okay, that's 25 minutes later, and it's starting to slow down a fair bit now. There you go, just ground to a halt. So that was uh, 30 minutes from stopping putting wood in to the engine stopping. There's our fire, and he's pretty much died. I probably could have prolonged the engine running by uh, pushing the fire back a bit so it's a bit more even. But I think we'll leave it for the day.